We go to Caracas. The, the anti-fascist youth and students work congress continues. Let's go to with our special envoy Belando Los Santos for more information that is happening on this second day. for the second day of the Youth Anti-Fascist Congress that is underway here in Venezuela. We were saying yesterday that 70 countries sent delegations to this Congress. There are over 1,000 delegates that have been summoned here to Caracas that are debating and bringing experiences from all over the world with one goal, and that goal is to debate different struggle strategies to confront the fascism that is being seen all over the world in different projects. And this is a key strategy to internationalize that struggle, to seek common, a common agenda and common strategies to combat that. So that is the process that is being here today. The second day is being inaugurated as we speak with different speeches that, and the first panel table that is being listened to by all the delegates and in that context, we are here speaking to one of the members of this delegation to come from the United States. We are talking about Yamir Chabur. He is a U.S. activist and media analyst and also part of the Venezuelan Solidarity Network. So thank you, Yamir, for joining us this, this day here at the Congress. And please, let's start by talking a little bit about this Congress that is happening here in Caracas. What were your, your ideas and your just view of the first day? How, how, how did you experience the day yesterday? And your first impressions about the discussions that are being underway? Yes, um, I just want to say thank you, Belen, uh, for inviting me once again here to join you in Telesur English. It's a, it's, a, it's a grand opportunity to now be here live in Caracas, Venezuela, the birthplace of the liberator Simón Bolívar, and now the, the epicenter of anti-imperialism, anti-colonialism, and anti-fascist struggle has been expressed in this youth international conference. But yes, the experience here has been amazing, has been inspiring to see youth from over 75 countries coming from all around the world, from Europe, to Asia, to Africa, different parts of Latin America, and as well as North America, um, coming here all uh, unified under the umbrella of anti-fascism and hearing testimonies from uh, different struggles around the world, uh, learning from every other group, and also being aware of the new challenges that we're facing with this uh, crisis of capitalism that we're witnessing worldwide and the rise of fascism as we see in, in Europe, as we see in the, in the wars in Ukraine, in the Middle East with the state of Israel, and now um, as you see, well, as you see as well in, uh, in South America with presidents such as uh, Javier Milei from Argentina, and now um, in the United States with the, with the victory of, uh, of the ex-president Donald Trump and his, his extreme um, MAGA, MAGA movement in, in the United States. So we are all coming together in uh, figuring out ways as the youth, as uh, people who are the future generation of our countries and also the future generation of our, of our planet Earth. Exactly, and Jamir, I would like to point out something that you were just saying. So the United States has had an election process and it's entering a new period political-wise. And with the new presidency of Donald Trump that will begin this January. So that is a new context for the state and also a new context for the world and also for the movement within the United States. So what does the fight against imperialism, the fight against fascism mean within the United States and, and particularly within the United States in a new presidency of Donald Trump? That's a very great question. I think the ascendancy, the new ascendancy of uh, Donald Trump, um, who was president before, coming back into the White House, demonstrates the crisis of capitalism that we are feeling worldwide, but also in the United States, where um, this new fascism that we are seeing, and I say new 
uh, because it takes the old ideas and tries to remarket itself, tries to rebrand itself. Um, we see an example with Donald Trump and his Make America Great Again movement, which when you think about it in, in the acronym terms, it's called MAGA. Um, when you think about it, he talks about this time when the United States was was grand, but when you think about it, when, when, what, what does he talk about? What, what specific time period was America ever great for vulnerable communities, whether that's African American or Native American, indigenous people, or as well as uh, migrant, migrant communities or uh, LGBTQ communities. So we see uh, Donald Trump utilize the, the hypocrisies and the failures of the Democratic Party, which has led the country to a downward spiral. When we talk about inflation, due to the wars that they, the Biden and Harris administration has supported in Ukraine and with the state of Israel, which has affected the U.S. economy with inflation, as well as the immigration at the border, um, which the migrants are, are coming as economic refugees from countries such as Venezuela or Cuba or Nicaragua or other states that the United States has intervened militarily or economically, destabilizing their countries, make, uh, forcing this, uh, affecting this migration into the United States. And as well as the genocide we see in Palestine, which the Biden and Harris administration has not wanted to address or solve, but Donald Trump has taken all the, the, the problems and the failures of the Biden administration and the anger, the frustration that people has felt to take to, to his uh, advantage for his campaign, for his presidency. So as far as explaining his MAGA movement, which is a new fascism, um, basically they want to, they want to turn the, the clock around and want to make sure that the U.S. is the hegemon worldwide, imperialistically, wanting to uh, attack states like China and Iran, uh, making sure that they can weaken the BRICS and making sure to ensuring that the U.S. dollar stays as the global currency worldwide. But internally, you know, talking to somebody from the United States, they also want to smash historical social movements, that of, of Dr. Martin Luther King and his civil rights movement. They would love to turn the clock back. And since they can't do an upfront attack on the civil rights movement, they have to attack the vulnerable communities, which are the immigrants and also the, the trans LGBTQ community, which Donald Trump has said on his first day, he's going to do mass deportations of undocumented immigrants. And we in the United States, the people that stand for justice, the people that stand for equality, uh, we'll, we'll, we will not allow that. And we have to follow in the footsteps of leaders like Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And, and also, to end my point too, the irony how Donald Trump, the new elected president of the United States, the empire, will take uh, um, his uh, inauguration will be January 20th. That's the same day as uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day, where, where we celebrate in the United States. So we are planning as the social movements throughout the United States to mobilize in Washington, D.C. on the 20th to d demonstrate opposition against Donald Trump and his new administration, his new right-wing administration, and also to defend that, that golden legacy of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. We will definitely be closely following what will be happening in the United States and the possibility that the social movements will be able to organize and mobilize in the face of this new period term in office of Donald Trump. Thank you, Jamir, for joining us in Telesur English. And that was Jamir Chabur, an activist, also media analyst from the United States. And this is just one more testimony of the, the kind of debates that are going on in this Congress, let's recall. We are at the Youth Anti-Fascist Congress in Caracas, over 70 countries, over 75 countries have sent their delegations here, and these are the kind of debates that are going on. What is the current global scenario? What are the challenges that the peoples of the world are facing? But also, what are the opportunities for international solidarity? What are the opportunities for organization in the face of these challenges? 
and all this global structure to think about and to plan and to build a new world order. That is what is being debated here and it's being debated by none other than the young generations on all of these countries, a huge part of the global south, but also of Western powers and Western economies that whose, whose organizations and whose activists are also here trying to build a better world. So we will continue to bring all the information from what's happening here in Caracas throughout the day. Now we go back to you, Luis. Thank you, Belen, for the latest information. We'll stay in touch for upcoming news briefs to continue knowing everything that is happening in this anti-fascist international congress of the youth and students. Stay tuned with Teresa English for more updates.